What's up, guys? I don't know how to describe this. The This is not, that's not logic. Hey guys, I'm John Carolino, and today we are going to be getting some ambient guitar tunes just using native effects built into Logic Pro X or Logic Pro 10. So let's check it out. So let's get into what I have going on here. Um, so let's start with the rhythm track first. I'm just going to solo this right here. Um, <clears throat> so here's what I have going on. So that's what that sounds like with uh, all the effects engaged completely dry all the guitars pretty much sound like this which is pretty simple right um so what i've done probably per well not probably what i've done for every instance is just loaded the basic Logic um, is loaded the basic Logic uh, Vox amp simulator. So all I'm using is something that's pretty close to the stock sound that you pull up. Um, I think I moved this mic a little closer. Uh, I might have turned the gain down just a little bit. Um, but for the most part, this is those were my settings. And it sounds like this. I think that sounds pretty good. Um, so after that, I have an EQ hitting the amp right after because I don't really want it to affect the, um, the effects that are going on. And then I have a tape delay going on, and this is just um, a tape delay that's in... Um, that's in the effects um, options that you have here. So it's just this tape delay in stereo. And let's open that up. You can see um, I have them going on eighth notes. Uh, the spread is about at 40. The clip threshold I turned down a little bit because I like to have a little bit of that breakup going on in the delay. Feedback at 94%. Um, you got some modulation going on. Uh, and then more, more dry than wet signal. So here's what this sounds like. Um, so I think that sounds pretty good. Um, and then after that, I have the chroma verb going on, and we'll check that out. Um, I think this is kind of like one of the default settings or something close to the default settings. Um, this chroma verb is awesome. Uh, back in the day, not that far back in the day, but I think before 10.4, uh, 
um, before Logic 10.4, the reverbs are kind of like lackluster and you really wanted a third party <laughs> reverb, but they threw this guy in there and it's pretty awesome. Um, I think it's kind of up there with some of the third party uh, reverbs and stuff that you get, um, like with Valhalla and stuff like that. So, um, or Valhalla H verb, whatever you guys are using. I, I like the Valhalla stuff. It sounds great. But anyway, um, so yeah, I got a low shelf going on here. Size is at 50, density is at 20, decay is at 12 seconds, distance 51%. And then I got my dry sound kind of coming out a little bit more than the wet sound. Um, so dry is at 100%, wet is at 63. And then um, I have a few EQ things going on here just to shape the sound a little bit um, overall. So here's what that sounds like. Really dig that. And then I just got a basic compressor on there. Um, I think this is kind of one of the compressors they just throw on um, with the preset uh, for the for the Brit clean, Brit and clean setting. And so um, I like to have the compressors on last in the studio in a studio setting. Um, so it just kind of brings everything out and you know brings up the the low level stuff. You can kind of hear it a little bit more airy. It's a little more airy because it kind of pushes up, pushes up the trails, but without like really doing anything to the reverb. So that's pretty cool. So that's the uh, the main um, rhythm sound, I guess. Uh, let's go to the drone sound. So again, with nothing on. <laughs> The drone sound at all. This is what you get. Oops. Just that right there. It's exhilarating. <laughs> so all I'm doing is playing a chord. One second. All I'm doing is playing a chord, and my fingers are just doing this. But I'm doing it like really lightly to try to like not have any attack at all. It's an Andy Offling trick. Check out one of his videos. Um, so again, just throwing the amp simulator on there. Um, and then we go to the pedal board. So let's show you what I had on the pedal board. So for an option, I had this whammy effect on there and really all it does is make it sound like a, uh, make it sound like there's a pog on it or something like that. So right now I think it's on, you know, plus 12. So that's, that's like a high um, one octave up kind of sound. And then from there I have um, a retro chorus. And that's, that's set to sync um, with a quarter note triplet. And then from there, I have this tie-dye delay. And I have the feedback kind of high, it's at 98%. The time, um, I have that synced as well. It's at a dotted eighth note. The tone is at 68. Mix is at, like it was, 33. <laughs> and I have it on this bright setting here. Um, and here's what that sounds like together. So you can start to hear it get kind of a little washy, a little soupy, maybe. And then I have this true tape delay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> true tape delay on reverse, 
Um, here's the settings for the stuff up there. For the time, I have that going at uh, quarter note. Feedback is at 93%, and then the mix is at 30%. And so here's what all that sounds like together. So you can see it's just beginning to sound like a conjumbled mess. And then from there, I throw on the tape delay again. And the reason why I did that is to give it some spread. So I, I have the spread pretty high at 57%. Um, the low cut and high cut, I kind of um, just squash down that, that width of the frequencies to kind of give me that low fi frequency kind of thing. Feedback is at 61%. And then you can see like the output is at 70 and 74%. Um, just to let it stand out a little bit more. So here's what this all sounds like together. So now we're getting like super washy. I like it. Very cool. And then we had the chroma verb again. Yay. And this one I have on the, take it easy. This one I have on the blue, the blue me, blue me, the blue me setting. Um, and these are like all the settings that they have built into them, and they're they're pretty cool. I really like I really like this Chroma Verb plugin. Mainly the visualization; it's a lot of fun. Look at that; that's cool. It's like trap code particular for all of you uh, motion graphics nerds. So anyway, size at 100, density 52, decay 9.6 seconds, distance 51. Dry, there's no dry signal, it's 100% wet. It's actually 70% wet, but that means it's 100% wet if there's no dry signal. So um, that's what I have there. Low shelf, and then I EQ'd out some frequencies that were just not pleasant to my ears. Um, and then just kind of a high cut, low cut, just rolled off. Um, so here's what all that sounds like together. Oh, and then to give myself further EQ options, I put the EQ after everything along with the compressor. So here's what this all sounds like. So it kind of get takes a bit to, to get going, but once it gets going, it sounds real good. All right, so now we're moving on to the um, the ambient swells. So again, turn everything off real quick. <clears throat> Started with the amp simulator. Don't really need to show you guys that. It's it's like the same amp that I used for everything. So here's the fun part. Here's here's the part I'm really proud of. This fat effects. So what was happening here is I needed a good auto swell. And a lot of times, when you think about an auto swell, you would go to like the dynamics, um, the dynamics portion of your effects, and say, "Hey, um, an enveloper would be great." But the enveloper in Logic is not great, so I did not use it. Um, it's just a real short attack. It's not smooth. Like it's not, it's not wonderful at all. And so I remembered as I was going through some stuff to try to think about how to pull this off. Um, I remember there's this multi effects in here, and fat effects is an option. So lately, I've been getting more and more into synths and um, just electronic music production and stuff like that. And so, you know, a lot of those guys are using Ableton, and Ableton just packs you full of all kinds of different tools you can use to uh, manipulate sounds and stuff like that. And I was just like, I wish there was something like that in Logic. Well, now there is. Um, so this fat effects is really cool. Um, I'm not really using any of the crazy stuff. I'm just using some of the simple stuff, but you can see there's like bandpass stuff. There's this X, Y, um, parameter thing that you can cross between, you know, all these different effects. There's a filter, distortion, modulation stuff, bass enhancers, uh, compressors. But what I'm, I was more interested in is this envelope follower. So basically all that's happening is, um, it's again, you know, using an, em an envelope, but this envelope is just much, much better, much smoother, uh, much more controllable than the one that's built in to 
uh, just an, at the envelope burr built into logic. So um, what's happening here is this is enabled. I've set my parameters and it's looking for a target. So it's looking for something to envelope. <laughs> so what I wanted it to do was control the master output. And so you can see that like, you have all of these different options, but I just wanted to control the master output. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see the note. So this is what it sounds like without the um, fat effects. So those aren't ambient swells at all, or just swells in general. Actually sounds super lame, right? But you turn on the fat effects and you watch this right here. So what's happening is these parameters are set and it's controlling the output, um, which I just think is great because it's exactly what I needed. And it just sounds way better. I can probably turn that release up a little bit. Probably turn it up a lot a bit. And just like let it do its thing. But you gotta be careful if you have close notes, um, you'll want it to shut down a little faster. So those are my settings there. It's at 96%, around 97%, and then the depth is at 1,000%. Um, then I have the EQ and then the pedal board. Again, using some of the uh, same effects, um, the whammy, the chorus, and the delay, but the whammy is actually activated for this one, so here's what it sounds like. Again, it's just another octave, whole octave up with the mix pretty low because it is pretty harsh. More chorus in there. Just give it a little bit of movement. Um, you can probably turn that off if you don't really want it. And then the true tape delay uh, set to an eighth note. Then after that, I got the tape delay going. Um, let's see, I got this as a dotted eighth note, clip thresholds turned down a little bit to give me a little bit of breakup, modified the, um, the frequencies a little bit, the spread is at 40, feedback is at 82, modulation's in there, and then I have this a little bit more wet than dry, um, just to give it a nice washy sound. And so from there, I have a stereo delay put in place. On my pedal board rig, a lot of the times what I like to do um, is the last delay that's on there is pretty much a uh, dual delay with a dotted eighth note going, on, going in one ear um, or one side and then a quarter note going in the other side. And so I just wanted to emulate that here. Um, and so I use this digital delay. It's real simple. Um, this should actually be left in, right? <clears throat> Um, so I have it set to a quarter note on the left side, a dotted eighth note on the other side. Um, yeah, and this one, it's not running parallel. It's kind of crossing into each other just a little bit, but that's okay. And then the output is at 43 and 38. For the right side, since it's a dotted eighth note and it repeats more, I turned it down just a little bit so it evens out the sound. And so here's what it all sounds like together. Actually, let me show you, you what it sounds like um, without the other delays and stuff. Here, I'll turn the fat effects off too. So you can kind of hear what's going on left and right. So all together without reverb. It's starting to sound great. <clears throat> and after that, we threw in the chroma verb again. I think this is probably the same setting that I had on the regular rhythm setting, but uh, a reflective hall, low shelf, 
Size is at 50, density is at 20, decay is at 12 seconds, distance is at 51%, uh, dry is at 55%, and wet is at 100%. And then we have the same kind of EQ output um, settings there as well. And we slap a compressor on the end just to make everything nice and wonderful. So here's what it sounds like. So now all together again. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Um, I hope this helps some of you. Um, you know, not all of us want the same pedals. Not all of us want or can afford, you know, a lot of the things that you typically see on some ambient guitar players, boards, um, stuff like that. And it's not it's anyone's fault. It's just like if you don't need it, you don't need it. If you don't want it, um, it's not your style. Um, but it's like you have such a huge tool if you have logic you have such a great tool in logic it's like why not use some of the things that are in there if like you maybe are doing a session and you only need to do ambient stuff just a little bit but like normally you don't play that kind of stuff and so you wouldn't need like all the pedals and stuff that make you and help you do that kind of thing so um you know i'm all about like when i when i get a tool um, or a tool like a pedal or something like that. Like I want to invest everything I can into it to know how to make it work uh, for me as best as possible before I even rule it out to say, hey, this doesn't work for me. Um, and so I, you know, lugging my pedal board around and stuff like that. I mean, it's big and it sucks sometimes and I don't want to move it around and I keep thinking about like, how can I just downgrade this thing? But there's times where like I'll be at home and my pedal board's somewhere else and, you know, I want to play or I want to do something and I don't have the, the tools that I need to, um, to make that happen. So I, I just took it upon myself to see if I could pull something like this off in Logic and I think this is completely passable. Um, so, you know, when you're, when you're getting pedals, when you're, when you're getting new programs and, you know, VSTs and all that stuff, like dig into them and see if they can really do what you want them to do and give it time. Um, and so hopefully this helps someone, hopefully, you know, this inspires someone. Um, if you end up using some of these settings, let me know, let me hear it. I love to check out what you guys are doing with anything that, um, you know, you might've learned from any of these videos. So thanks a lot guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and do all that cool stuff that YouTubers and YouTube watchers normally ask you to do and do. So we'll see you on the next one guys. Bye.